Spurious emissions. I got a recent post on one of my videos saying, quote, hint, hint. I love that hint. Nobody buying these radios, parentheses, aside from content creators who like to whine, in parentheses, cares about spurious emissions. Well, guess what? We're about to wind this one, buddy. Yeah, I'm going to drink it because it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Not here, but it is somewhere. That's pretty good for a cab. What do you know? Okay, spurious emissions. I love this. I love this comment. This is a fantastic comment. The guy is completely wrong, of course. He's completely wrong. He just wants to argue. And that's okay. You know what? Everyone has the right to their own opinion. I'm not really trying to call this dude out. I almost crossed out his name, but you know what? He made this public comment on a public video, and um, I replied to him. This was yesterday this happened. I replied to him yesterday, almost immediately after the fact, because I got the email. YouTube's supposed to email you about the comments, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's kind of one of those things. But anyway, I replied to him, and he, did, he hadn't, as of the time of this recording, he hadn't replied back yet. But hint, nobody buying these radios, aside from content creators who like to whine, and he's right. I am whining right now. Mm, that's really good. Cares about spurious emissions. And my response to him was, well, you should. Unless you enjoy being trackable by others. When you use a dirty radio to transmit, it transmits on multiple frequencies at the same time, allowing others to find your, you easier. Have you ever heard of direction finding? DF. It's called DF in the ham radio world. Direction finding. It is a skill that ham radio operators often call... Fox hunting. There's these little micro transmitters. We will hide in places and one guy will hide it and then everyone else will try to, to, to find it. And you can use handheld Yagi antennas or you can drive around in your car and this kind of thing. And they, heck, I used to do that back in the CB days. They used to call it cat and mouse. Uh, the mouse would go hide somewhere, then everybody else would drive around and ask him questions. And when, you, when he's talking, you can kind of direction find where he's going. It's a fun project if you've never done it. But direction finding is a thing. So in reality, do you think it would be easier to direction find you if you're transmitting on one radio at a time or on four radios at a time? Because oftentimes when you are transmitting on a dirty radio with spurious emissions, spurious emissions basically means, let's say that your radio is, you've set your radio to transmit on 146.52 megahertz, okay? So when you key up and transmit, it transmits on that frequency. But it might transmit somewhere around the um, 290 to 292 megahertz range because 146 times 2 is 290. 146 times 3 is around 438, okay? And 136 times 4 is twice 290, which is like just under 600, right? So if you're keying up on your radio and it's transmitting on all four of those frequencies, what do you think is happening there? Do you think that it's something that, it, it, do you think that's a feature of the radio? Do you think that it's really going to be a good thing when you're transmitting and you're transmitting where you think you're transmitting, but you're also transmitting in like three or four or five other areas? Do you think that's a good thing? I mean, to me, that seems like something that you would not want to do, especially if you're trying to bug out or hide out or be some sort of clandestine. I get comments on videos all the time about how ham radio's not, there's no encryption. Ham radio's completely open. Everybody can monitor you. Everybody can track you. Everybody, a lot of guys uh, make the statement of, well, I don't get a license because I don't want the FCC having my address. Well, guess what? The IRS has your address already. If you've ever had a water bill in your name or a driver's license or a passport, there are agencies out there that have buku's more information on you than the FCC does. That's a lame excuse. If you don't want to get a ham license, then don't get a ham license. Okay, cool. Don't use that as an excuse. Code. It's a very lame excuse. Okay, there's already information out there on you, especially if you're commenting on a YouTube video. YouTube has YouTube and Google has all your information already, most likely. But even if they don't, hopefully you pay taxes or you have a driver's license and you're not driving around a vehicle without insurance illegally and uh, going to cause a wreck because, you know, that would be bad. And uh, don't run into me if you have no license and insurance. But if you do have a license and insurance, then your your stuff's out there already. So that that's a thing. I'm not done whining yet. Mm. But seriously, this is a pretty good comment. This is a good comment because it shows that 
people are unaware of exactly what this is. Now, there is such a thing as being a good ham radio operator. And one of the things that ham radio, the question pool and the study materials teach you is how to be a good steward of radio. You don't actually want to be bleeding all over your neighbors. You don't want to be causing interference to your neighbors. And if you are, there are ways to mitigate that besides just taking your station down and giving up. Okay, there are uh, ferrite beads, toroids, there's grounding equipment. There's all sorts of, and kinds of ways that you can use to not interfere with your neighbors and the neighborhood around you. So there's ways to do that. And that's part of being a good ham radio operator. You want to use equipment that is clean. Now, some people may be like, and you might not agree with me and say, oh, who cares? Nobody cares about that. Well, people do care about it. You may not care about it. But what makes your opinion so much more important than someone who does care about it? Okay. And I'm making a joke about whining right now. I'm not whining about it. I'm telling you why you should care. You should care because, number one, you can be found a lot easier. If you're the type of person who wants to go out in the woods and transmit and not be found, then that's a thing. If you're the type of person who doesn't want to cause interference to your wife's touch lamp or to a some sort of uh, radio transmitter that's nearby or some sort of receiver or your the computer speakers in your own home or your kid's room or your neighbor's room or your neighbor's house something like that if you don't want to cause interference like that then you want something with a clean signal and that's why we don't like spurious emissions because it's harmful or it can be harmful all radio waves can be harmful to a certain degree if you key down on a 2000 watt amplifier on your CB radio you're going to bleed all over the place and that's harmful same thing is true with a ham radio. If it's not, ham radio is typically a cleaner radio than a CB radio is, typically, not always, but typically. So you just want to be aware of something like that. Now, while you're out in the field transmitting on hopefully a clean radio, you might even want to join a net. And if you want to join a net, I recommend checking out ham.live. Ham.live is an online place to meet up for net control operators and net control check-ins, check-in people who wants to check into nets, to monitor the net, see where everyone is. There's a little chat feature that he recently added to that. I interviewed Sean on this channel about ham.live. It's a completely free application. It's web-based, so it works on any platform, Windows, Linux, Mac, whatever. It'll work on your smartphone. Check out ham.live, link in the description below. I'll put a, a link below for the interview I did with Sean, the creator of ham.live also. Go check that out if you're involved in any type of ham radio net. HF, VHF local, DMR system fusion over the internet, whatever. Check out ham.live. It's a really cool tool. So I'd like to know, I, I mean, this guy is being argumentative, in my opinion. I think he's being argumentative. I mean, obviously, he thinks that I'm whining about spurious emissions. And I'm not the only one who's ever made a, a video about dirty radios. This this video that I showed you a second ago was about the, the Baofeng UV5RM and it's just a it's just a dirty radio. It's just not a very good transmitting radio. Okay. So it's going to interfere with other people around you. So he's trying to troll me, okay, and whine to you, sir. You know, because I mean really your comment is whining. I mean, you're whining in the comment section saying, nobody cares. About, nobody cares about this. Nobody cares about that. If that's not a wine, I don't know what is. This is wine. Mm. That's pretty good for Chardonnay, too. I said that already, didn't I? So, but in reality, you should care about it. You should want clean equipment. You should want equipment that's going to last a long time. That's not going to interfere with, with your neighbor's equipment. You should want equipment that's harder to track from. Okay, you shouldn't want equipment that's just dirty, dirty, dirty. So, and you can get Baofeng radios that are clean. I just picked up a Baofeng that's really clean that I'm working on a video for right now. So, it's not always about buying a five or seven hundred dollar ICOM. Okay, you can get Baofeng radios that are clean. You can get TID radios that are clean. You can get other types of radios that are clean that don't cost several hundred dollars. It's totally possible to do that. Okay, but what do you guys think? Do you think you care about spurious emissions? I mean, do you care? Do you care that your radio equipment has spurious emissions? Do you try to use radio equipment that does not have spurious emissions? Do you try to get clean signals? If so, tell me why you do it. And if not, if you don't care, tell me why that is too. I would like to know, even if you don't agree with what I'm saying, I would like to know what your thoughts are on this subject because it comes up every now and then. You know, leaving the trolls aside and the people who claim 
that I'm whining who are whining themselves. Leaving those people aside, I'd like to know what the audience actually thinks about spurious emissions. Good, bad, ugly, no one cares, right, wrong. What do you think? Put a comment below and thanks for watching today.